is probably one of my favorite Philip K. Dick, Dick, uh, Philip K. Dick books. Um, and I was talking to Alex about it, the fact that it's one of his few books that's very rooted in our own time. A lot of his stuff, even if it's set in like 1984 or anything like that, it feels very future. Yes. And how is that, uh, adapting that into something, it actually reminded me a lot of an Upton Sinclair book uh, called Oil that I, I, I really like, which is yes. about classism and, and things like that. How yes. is it uh, like adapting that? Well, it's interesting because Issa, his daughter, who's one of the producers of the show, told me, you know, he always wanted to be considered a, just a novelist, not a sci-fi novelist. Uh, but people wanted sci-fi from him, and I think this was his attempt to be taken seriously as a real novelist. And that's why I think it's so different from all the other uh, things he wrote. And I think, it, you know, it's considered the crown jewel, you know, among his works. Um, it's a very challenging book. You know, it's very rich and dense with ideas, and it was not an easy ad adaptation. Um, and I had to uh, sort of build it out. I had to add characters and plot that weren't in the novel to make it into a TV series that could sustain. Uh, but I did it all with the intent of honoring the ideas that he established in the book and kind of giving those ideas more space to grow, more space even than in the novel he had. So, for instance, you know, in the novel there isn't John Smith. There, you know, it doesn't really take place in the Nazi side of the U.S. at all. Um, there isn't the sister who has the film. It's not a film, it's a book. Um, there isn't Chief Inspector Pito. So there are all these other characters I knew I was going to need in this kind of storytelling. But hopefully, um, it's just to dig deeper into, into the world he created. Have you, have you, in talking to people about the show, have you found any illumination back in the sense of people, what they've experienced and what they're coming to you and their own feelings about it? You know, what I didn't fully appreciate, but I certainly do now, is how real this is. Which sounds funny, because it's, it's science fiction, it's alternative reality, but you know, it's about, it's about our past. And it's about Nazis, and Japanese, and Jewish people being killed, and like, this is very sensitive. It's serious stuff. And you, you realize very quickly, you better be very careful how you dramatize these things, and what you say. And, and unfortunately, there are also people out there you could watch this show and be rooting for the wrong people, you know? So it's a really delicate thing to plot this. And, and one of the things that I wanted to do is, you know, Nazis were used to looking at them, they're the bad guys over there, with the shiny black boots and, and the swastikas, they're the bad guys, way over there. And in this show, they come right up to you because they're us. Most of the Nazis in the show have American accents. And something you've got to think, you know, they weren't, they did monstrous things, but they were people. How do people do these monstrous things? How do they justify? Not all of them were psychopaths. Most of them weren't. How did they? How did they come to terms with all this? And you said it on American soil with American act, uh, characters, and it makes you think about that. Like game show with the Nazis. The game show. I, that to me is just like insane. Like, well, did you learn that in the Hitler, Hitler Youth? Yeah, yes, I did. That was the very first thing we shot. Really? And it was like the crew, like people came to me. Now I get the show. Uh, now I get what you're doing. Because that guy was so all-American. You know, the contestant in the Nazi uniform. And the whole format was so all-American. And it was so much like our past, but not. That's, that's the strategy. I have a bit of a two-part question for you. The show had a long process, like, adapting this book for the screen, you know what I mean? Can you tell us a little bit about that? And also, now that we're here, what are the benefits of being an Amazon show? So... Uh, Scott Free and Headline Pictures uh, have been trying to get this made for five years before they came to me. And I, I know David Zucker, the Ridley Scott's producer in Los Angeles, and he said, will you take a crack at this? And I said, sure. And then I read it, I hadn't read it since college, and I read it again, I go, oh my god, this is, this is a tough adaptation. Uh, anyway, I wrote the first two episodes uh, for sci-fi. And my friend Tom Schnauz, who writes for Breaking Bad and I Better Call Saul, wrote three and four. And they passed. And it was dead. It was dead for two years. And then uh, Christmas, uh, almost two years ago now, uh, Morgan Wandell, who I'd known from ABC when he was uh, my executive on Night Stalker, called me and said, I've just got a job at Amazon. Do you have any script you just love that's, that really you know, can make an impact? Because Amazon wants to make a big impact. So, well, it so happens. I have Man My Castle. And amazingly, he liked it, and amazingly, it led to the show being made. But it was like really a Hail Mary. It's amazing that that actually worked. 
Um, but then the experience of being on Amazon, there's so many things that are different about it. But I'd say the, the, the most obvious ones are, first of all, they gave us a lot of money. Uh, really, I can't imagine anybody else. I mean, there are very few people who would have spent their money on the show that they did, and you really have to. It's part of why I think it was probably hard to get the show made all those years. It's a giant investment to make it properly. I think that immersion is really important, right? It's really important, and it's, it's big. I mean, look at the pilot. The pilot's New York, San Francisco, and Colorado. It's giant. Um, and it's period, which is always very expensive. And it's a period that never happened, even more expensive. Um, and then they they were remarkably disciplined about not interfering. They gave really very few notes. And I'm convinced they had a lot more notes, but they just, they, they had self-control, and they were like, we're gonna let you make this, which was great. And, and that, it's what that does to you. When I mean, you don't have 50 notes, if you have 50 notes, you take them all off, you go, okay, I'm done. I've done your 50 notes. If you have three notes, well, I've got 20 more on my own. It's like, it creates a kind of, you're responsible for, for this, you know, which is a really good psychology to have. So, um, if this fails, it's on me, it's not on them. Going back to what we were talking about, um, how real it, the story is, because it is our history. How much were you informed by the fact that there's growing anti-Semitism in Europe and across the world right now? Because it may not have been as bad, but we had the Great Recession and our, so many people are inclined to blame the other. I mean, you have Donald Trump blaming the Mexicans right now for all of our problems. How much does that inform it when you're writing and creating a story like this? A lot. It's on my mind a lot. And I think that's why the show is particularly timely. And who knew, you know? I mean, to some degree, it's always timely because there's always intolerance and hatred and fear. And I think those are the things that drive uh, that phenomenon now, but um, you know, a show like this, it, hopefully, it forces you to think about what's the difference between us and that state trooper and the pilot. What what do we stand for? And we're so polarized in this country right now, so polarized between right and left, and it's so angry. And you know, I think everybody can agree we don't want to be occupied by Nazis. I think we can all be united by that. And then we can say, what is it that sets us apart? And this show, I think it makes you uneasy sometimes because there are scenes where you go, what is the difference? That's so close to something that I might say. It's not though. It's not really, that's not American, that thought. In, in, in my understanding of America, it's not. But somebody in America might say that. And so it, it makes you think about what do we stand for? And I feel like America is an idea. I've been an expatriate for five years, so I'm looking at America from the outside. It's a beautiful idea, but it's it's up to each generation to realize that idea. And if we don't, it's, it's not going to happen. There's nothing inevitable that says we're always going to be this great country that leads the world, inspires people. It's up to each generation to live up to that idea. And I think this is a show that, without preaching, you know, it just it invites you to think about what makes us special and how do we stay special. Um, which is a good thing. It's like, you constantly have to renew that, I think. One of the things that I, I've, I noticed about this as I was watching, because I, I rewatched the pilot a couple times, is the fact that, you know, there's the banality of evil. There's the state, state trooper where this is just the way things are. It's yes. not a big deal anymore. And it's almost, there is that sense that people thought when the Nazis and the Japanese occupied, the world was going to end. Right. But it didn't. Yes. So life goes on. That's correct. And it's, you know, how is it creating kind of that lived-in world and the sets and everything and just creating that, how difficult was it to create that feeling of life going on and something that should be shocking but isn't? Well, I think that's that's exactly it. Is that we all like to think, if that happened, well, I'd be in the resistance. I'd be stopping. It's like, you know what? No. Like 99% of us would not. You know, unless you were Jewish or black, unless you were forced or they killed somebody in your family, right? Which is what happens in, in my pilot. You would just try to get along. Most of us would just try to stay alive, take care of our families, you know, go to work. You would. You may not like it, but what would it take to make you step out of line and risk your life? What What is the quality of freedom? What would you sacrifice to be free? And I, I remember when I was, you know, I talked about this earlier, when I was in college, there was the solidarity, solidarity protest in Poland. And I couldn't believe it, because the Soviet Union existed at that time. 
And I thought, these guys, they're crazy, these, these steel workers. They really think they're going to stop the Soviet Union? What chance do they have? The bravery, the stupidity of that. And then look what happened. The Soviet Union's gone, and Lefkoe Windsor was the president of Poland. It's amazing, amazing. And, and to set that on American soil and make Americans think about that was really exciting to me. You know, if people, you know, that was the comment I think we made as well, would, when you said, would people step up today? The joke I made was that if they had their internet and they had their phone, they, okay, it's not so bad. I still got my, I can still talk on the phone. I still have the internet. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, we are so entertained right now. We are so entertained. But I really do feel there's a hunger in people to stand for something more, to have bigger ideals other than just, I've got my nice apartment, I've got my iPad and my, my TV and my stuff. You know, this country is about big ideas, and um, it's nice to be able to talk about this. It's nice to have a story that allows you to talk about this. Absolutely. All right, we're out of time. Sorry. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much. You.